I'll open up the room. Hi, everyone. Hello. You're not connected. Oh, it's all here? Yeah. Good Lord, I just can't see everyone in the chat because yeah. you're all really small, but. <laughs> yeah. Lovely, uh, Mickey. Hello. Uh, Nat, do we want to wait a second for everyone to uh, arrive, or, or should we get started? Whatever works. Um, as If there are more folks coming in the waiting room, I'll automatically uh, bring them in. Okay, gotcha. All right, so then maybe have it uh, if, as you're kind of arriving, maybe if everybody could just write hello in the, the chat and maybe tell us where you're from or uh, what you teach. Feeling we're gonna have a lot of California. <laughs> yeah, everybody probably. <laughs> Not me. I'm from New Jersey, guys. Hello, everyone. <laughs> we got New Jersey, Idaho, and Michigan here. <laughs> got Hanford. You guys have a great dairy place, Superior Dairy. Good ice cream. I have to travel more. I don't know too much of California. <laughs> All right. Uh, do we want to get started? Yeah, let's Great. Start. So uh, welcome, everyone, and thanks for joining us. We are PCS Adventures. And we're really excited to be chatting with all of you today about podcasting, a revolutionary STEM tool for creative expression. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of resources and some activities that you can take back uh, to your learners right away. And we're gonna show those all with you today. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, as we kind of go through, if you uh, have any questions or you wanna add anything to the chat or turn on your mic and share out, please feel free to do so. We have a couple uh, team members working with us today who are here to answer any of your questions. Oh, there it goes. All right, we're in. Um, okay, so just so you know a little bit about who I am, my name is Jessica Ventry. Uh, I started mainly as an elementary school teacher in uh, grade four inclusion rooms. I did that for about seven years. And while, during those seven years, I started as a general instructional coach uh, before becoming my district's K-5 instructional coach. And that's when I worked a lot on student-led learning with um, educators and at the time, the new next generation science standards. Uh, so that's kind of really where I, I found my passion for STEM. Uh, and now I'm lucky enough to be home with my kids and I get to work uh, with PCS to combine my love of writing and my love of STEM together. Uh, and I'm also working as an instructional designer, creating courses uh, for educators nationwide uh, who are uh, doing professional development online. So that's been a lot of fun. Um, so about PCS Adventures, who we are. Uh, we are a STEM company that has been promoting STEM education as early as 1988. So a really long time we've kind of been in this business. Uh, we got our start in after-school programs, providing educators with learning solutions that got their students actively engaged in the learning process through hands-on uh, programming. We expanded our reach to a couple of Western states, and then we realized like, hey, we can have a much greater impact if we went nationwide. And so that's exactly what we did. Uh, and now PCS supports not only educators across the country, but globally as well. We serve a range of educators, anywhere from K-12 classrooms to out-of-school programs and a whole bunch more. 
uh, institutions like Girl Scouts and Boys and Girls Club of uh, America and the YMCA have all benefited from our hands-on instruction technique. And as of last year, the Air Force JROTC has enjoyed our Discover Drones programming and is actually looking to add some more PCS STEM to their repertoire. So that's really exciting. Uh, today, you're going to get a feel for how podcasting can amplify instruction. Uh, we'll be exploring strategies and activities together that you can take back with your students and use right away. As an educator, that's something I always loved. So hopefully we give a whole bunch of those to you uh, so you can get started with podcasting. Whether you're new to it or you have used it already with your learners, we've got a lot of great resources for you. Uh, Reese's. I have Valentine's Day candy on my mind, so I apologize. <laughs> Lots of chocolate on my brain. Uh, I'm looking forward to hearing about your experiences and your aspirations of using podcasting with your students. We're going to be working within our Discover podcasting program, which you see up on the screen there, and I'll be sharing some valuable tools available within the program should you wish to incorporate them into your own learning environment. So let's just take a quick look at our agenda. We're going to start with spending some time hearing from each of you. Uh, podcasting is obviously all about sharing your own story and making your voice heard. So I encourage you to please turn on your microphones today when, you, when uh, you're when you given the chance, uh, respond to polls that we put up and uh, utilize the chat feature or the reactions. I always love those little reaction tools. Uh, so please use them during, during our time together today because I really wanna hear what all of you have to say. Then we're going to explore how podcasting can be used to stimulate an interest in STEM, teach essential digital media skills, and how it can be used as a form of artistic expression. Um, we're going to end with an activity that you can use with your learners right away, some downloadables and resources that uh, foster collaborative learning and strategies to make the process of podcasting accessible to all learners, including uh, ELL English language learners. Feel free, as I said, to ask questions throughout. Uh, you can put them in the chat. We'll respond to you, um, or you can save them to the end. We'll have a Q&A session where we can dive a little bit more deeply into those questions. So it's up to you when you want to ask those. And definitely stick around to the very end because we have uh, a free audio studio trial that you can score for your learning environment. Um, it's an amazing digital audio workstation that we use in our program called Soundtrap, if you've heard of it. And it's really easy to use. It empowers learners to feel really confident and take ownership of their learning. Uh, so definitely stick around for that. Just to get ourselves comfortable sharing with one another today, um, I wanted to start us out with this quick share. So turn on your microphones if you can, or if you're willing, or even in the chat box uh, and tell us, so why do people create podcasts and which podcasts do you personally enjoy? Which ones do you listen to? Um, I'll go ahead and answer. Um, so I feel like people create podcasts to kind of um, create like a relationship with people, like, um, like I can relate to you type thing, um, or just like, gearing towards people's interests. I personally love to listen to crime junkies. <laughs> I'm a very big crime junkie kind of gal. I love just like hearing about all the stories of like these crazy crimes that happened um, in the past and in the present. So I love that. And, and even past and present, right? That history piece of there. I know a couple of my friends listen to ones that kind of go back in time and, and analyze something that happened in history. So those are always really fun. Got kind of a, a nice blend in podcasting of educational and murderous <laughs> and uh, a little bit more entertainment. Uh, somebody in the chat said that podcasts are used to have discussions on topics that are important to them that they want to talk about. Absolutely. Any other ideas? On my drive home today, I was listening to Office Ladies. I love those recaps of television shows that kind of go back. Those are some of my personal favorites. Freakonomics. I have to know more about that. <laughs> Very cool. I, I also like to listen to like comedy podcasts um, in the morning to get my day started is usually, you know, what I do. It kind of, you need a good laugh sometimes. <laughs> Absolutely. 
All right, we're gonna move on to our next slide, but definitely all of you out there, make sure you're participating because we got a lot of things coming up uh, that I'm definitely gonna wanna hear your opinions. Thank you so much, Yvonne, uh, for, for sharing and um, to those in our chat as well. All right, so like we said, there are some educational podcasts, nonfiction storytelling, that's like maybe science or history, investigating a true story. Um, that's always fun. Uh, fictional storytelling as well. Um, conversations, right? We said hearing discussions between other people. Um, interviews uh, are really big. And then of course you have the hybrid podcast, right? The one that combines a couple of different strategies uh, within its, its one format. All right, so now that we know all of the different possibilities that are out there, we're gonna discuss some ideas. So pitching. Uh, pitching is a process where a production team comes together and shares their ideas with a group for an episode in their podcast. Everyone gets a chance to share. Uh, they usually share maybe their top two ideas and it's followed by questions from the group. It's a great way for learners to get really comfortable collaborating, really comfortable sharing their thoughts and ideas with others from the very beginning. Uh, we know that STEM, STEM is super collaborative and we wanna help foster those relationships as Yvonne was saying really early on to help support that wide range of personalities that are definitely in all of our, our learning environments. It also gives everyone that opportunity to be heard. Uh, and we know that that's important to building learner self-confidence. It recognizes feelings and actions and intentions as something that's meaningful. And even more so when their pitch receives feedback, right? When they, someone follows it up with a question because it shows that learner that, hey, they, they were listening to me. I, I feel validated, I feel heard. Uh, and, and that's a big thing for, not only for our middle schoolers and high schoolers, but for everyone. Uh, and of course, pitching can be unbelievably nerve wracking for some people, right? Not everybody likes sharing their ideas. So that's why we include scaffolded prompts like the one that you see there. It says, I want to do an episode about blank. It's interesting because blank. And we pulled that directly from our Discover podcasting program. It's one of the many strategies that our notable experts who we'll, we'll talk about a little bit later um, told us they actually use in the podcasting industry. It's how they get their content from that brainstorming process to where it's eventually seen by an authentic audience. And we'll, uh, we're gonna practice using this pitching strategy and kind of get our creative juices flowing and, and see what we can come up with here. So again, I'm gonna ask you if you can to share either in the chat or turn on your mic and uh, to use our, our sentence uh, starters here um, of I wanna do an episode about blank and interesting because blank. And this can be education related or it can be just something that you are interested in, something that you would want to share with others. Uh, we saw all those different formatting ideas that of, of types of podcasts that are out there. Take a second and kind of think, if you were to pitch an episode, what would it be? I can give you a quick example of my own if you'd like, just get the ball rolling. Um, if I maybe wanted to do a, a podcast, I could say, I wanna do an episode about teaching social emotional skills during podcasting. And I think that's interesting because on the surface, podcasting seems like a really isolating um, event, right? It's just you uh, behind a microphone, maybe a host or two, um, but people don't realize how collaborative it really is and how there's a, a lot of relationships that are fostered between students and teachers and promoting communication and improving motivation and uh, all of the different things that come with SEL. Um, so I think that would be a really valuable podcast for a lot of educators. Um, I'll go ahead and share again. <laughs> um, Thank you. <laughs> I, you're fine. Um, I would like to do an up and this is, you know, towards uh, my career and education based, but I would like to do an episode about um, handling challenging behaviors and how I would approach them and, you know, things that I've done um, now and in the past that have helped. I feel like this is interesting because a lot of um, other educators can really benefit from hearing different point of views on how, you know, different um, people handle these challenging behaviors and maybe even pick up um, some kind of um, 
what's the word technique into handling those students and um, what you can do in a positive way to be proactive with them. I love that. Thank you for sharing. If anybody wants to kind of take the pros advice and if you don't want to share your own idea, maybe have a follow up question for Yvonne or for myself. Uh, I see in the chat. I, I can do one. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I'd want to do an episode about um, the daily, I guess, not struggles, but just the daily process and all the hurdles and hoops that uh, early educators have to jump through um, on a daily basis. Since I'm a vendor and you know, on the sell side, it's just when I listen to some podcasts, I just I feel like <clears throat> just the relatability that some of these teachers go through on a daily basis for intake and outtake. And people just don't realize, like as a parent, just dropping your kid off, you think it's just all fun and games. And then you don't realize all the admin and busy work that all these educators have to do. So now that I'm in the sales side selling the software, uh, I just find it extremely interesting. Like we created a whole and it's so such a tedious tug of war that you guys have to do every day. So that's what I would be um, interested in doing. I love that. Definitely built some empathy for teachers. <laughs> we could use it for sure. Um, I see in the chat, uh, we wrote dog personalities to help pet owners understand pets behaviors and how to modify the bad ones. I can say the same for kids. <laughs> it's alike. <laughs> Anybody else? I think I would like to um, do an episode about um, like as an after school coordinator in a middle school. Um, and as a gentleman had said, just the daily things that no one thinks about. Um, snack not being on time. Like who would ever think, you know, uh, <laughs> today's a minimum day and what a minimum day entails. Um, people you know, don't get it. And I think it's interesting because I think it's just to bring to light the flexibility and the sense of humor that you need, possibly with teachers, possibly with admin, like to make it through the day. So I think that would be super interesting. Amen. <laughs> Anyone else? Otherwise, we'll, we'll go on to the next slide. All right. All right. Let's take a look. Thank you guys for sharing. All right, we're gonna do a quick poll here. So whomever is managing our polls, if you could pull that one up. And I want you to let us know just so we can get a kind of a, a feel for the experience that we have in the group that we have together. Um, have you tried podcasting in your learning environment? Yes, I have. I'm thinking about it, or well, I've kind of dabbled in it. Like I gave it a shot. Um, and for me, I dabbled in it also kind of means, you know, you've used some kind of recording, even if it wasn't podcasting directly, you've had your students recording their responses to something or um, giving information outside of the classroom environment, right? Having a reach further than just your learning environment. Thinking about it right now is in the lead. No experience yet. Interesting. I have a question about the poll. I might have answered it wrong. Is it like getting student re recordings or like showing a, like giving out a podcast for students to listen to, like while, as they're doing work? I think when we created it, we were originally thinking uh, student creation, but now that oh. you're saying it that way, uh, I, I think even just exposing students to podcasting, I think is still yeah, giving it a shot, right? Using those oh, mentor okay. pieces and 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 making and getting them familiar with the process. Yeah, I, I would say that that counts. Okay. All right. So it looks like most of us are at least uh, thinking about it, uh, but we don't really have anyone who's sat down and done a podcasting session, which is exciting because I think today you're going to get a lot of uh, really great tips to help you give that a shot. I'm gonna end that poll, but if you have anything else that you wanna put uh, in, the, in the chat, go ahead. There you go, those are those results. Okay. There we go. All right, so we don't have anyone that actually tried it themselves yet. So we're gonna skip over those first two bullet points, um, but I, I wanna focus there on that third one. Um, if you were to take on 
podcasting, as you're thinking about it, something that you, or you've dabbled in it a little bit, you have a little bit of experience. Um, what's something that uh, would, would, that you're looking for as support to help you really embrace podcasting? And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, if you dabbled in it, what did go well? Um, we, can, we don't have to skip over those first two. What did go well? What would have made the experience better for you? So that maybe instead of saying, I just dabbled, like, hey, I really took it on it and, and uh, it was successful or, or I wish I had this. Well, the only thing I have had experience with is Screencastify. Mm. So that's all I know. So right. I don't even know what I don't know because that's all I've <laughs> that's all I've used. So I'm not even sure what's out there. And that's really when you record your screen and you can kind of share it with the learners in your environment, right? You're not sending it out to anybody or anything like that. Right. Okay. Does anybody else have an experience to share? Um, I'll go ahead and share. Um, so I've worked with in education for 10 years now. Um, so not specifically at my job title now, but in the past when I was just a tutor, um, mm -hmm. I've played a podcast for, you know, the age group that was appropriate for the age group that I was with um, during like a homework time. Um, that way the kids can really focus and it kind of it's kind of like putting on like a lo-fi type of music during that time and it really got the students um, captivated in focusing on their homework and even focusing on the stories that were being told I would play like um, you know stories uh, or book reading for the kids um, and the podcaster I forgot the name of it, but he would go into depth of like kind of like off topic conversations about like the character development and stuff like that. And the students really, really enjoyed it um, to the point where sometimes we would even watch like the actual YouTube video on our free time. Um, and I felt like it was just a really neat way in getting the kids to be focused into something else that isn't just the normal like iPad learning or um, let, like doing crafts like it was just something different to bring into the classroom yeah it, it's definitely something that I, I especially adults I feel like we listen to a lot of podcasts and it's something that's in our lives and there are kids who listen to podcasts but it, it's almost for some of them a little bit less familiar right it's something new um because there are not as many that are kid focused though they're they're slowly are coming out with newer ones um which is exciting but also, I love that you pointed out storytelling, right? That's a huge part of podcasting and something we're going to talk really deeply about today. Um, so I, I'm really excited that you brought that up. Uh, one moment. Sorry, one second. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. Um, so before we move on to our next discussion activity, I just want to take a couple of minutes to talk to you about some of the powerful tools that we've included within our Discover podcasting program. Um, and what's really great about this curriculum is that we've already done that heavy lifting for you, right? We've already met with the industry experts. We've already done the research to ensure that your learners are going to get the absolute best out of their STEM podcasting experience. So it's just one less huge thing that you have to take on yourself. Uh, you've got enough on your plate. So we've already done that legwork for you. Um, if you're considering podcasting or if you're really excited to give it a try, uh, these are a couple of things you're going to want to know about what goes into podcasting and some of the things that are included in our program. Discover Podcasting engages learners in the digital media arts, inspiring them to combine art and technology in a lot of creative ways. Uh, the kids' favorite piece of it is certainly how hands-on and engaging it is. Um, as an educator, I really like that it's structured to give team members a taste of like a different, a lot of different career paths within STEM and within podcasting. Uh, it not only sets them up for their own futures, but it makes collaborating a lot easier, right? So it, 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 it makes them understand what each team member's contribution to the final product is. Uh, and that just makes I mean, if we had that understanding when I was in college and, and everybody was working in the group project, like, wow, that would have been so much easier. So it really it helps them become greater uh, collaborators down the line. 
All of the materials that you're going to need for podcasting is included in the program and it serves up to 30 students at one time. And we offer complimentary webinar trainings and step-by-step -step instructions that guide you through using the technology, guide you through using the educator guide. Uh, and when you're comfortable using that technology, when you're comfortable with the materials, the students are too. So we wanna make sure that if you feel supported. You can reach out to us at any time and we can answer any questions that you have. Uh, it's podcasting is the perfect outlet for learners. It really gives them structure and a supportive space where they can share their thoughts and ideas. Uh, it uses a lot of multi-subject integration, anything from tech standards to English language arts, um, ISTE, which we'll look at later, um, and depending on their topic, science and social studies. There's also extensions that are embedded within the the lessons so that uh, if learners need a little bit of an extra push or maybe some extra support, they have that. Um, and then we also have Soundtrap, which allows students to manage their work online. And if you are in a remote or hybrid environment, this is something that had, you're covered, right? You can, they can access it at home from any computer. Um, or if you just have that really over eager learner who just can't wait to make an editing tweak or just really wants to use some ambient sound that they collected at home and put it in there, uh, they can do that as well. So if you have learners like what I was in fourth grade, fifth grade, <laughs> they are covered as well. You can see that podcasting uh, covers a wide range of curriculum topics. It gives so much for learners um, in, to be in a really immersive and culturally, rel culturally relevant and relatable experience. Uh, so just something that I, I think all students really should be exposed to. Part of the heavy lifting that we've done for you that I mentioned earlier is that we already spoke to a lot of industry experts and mentors that will guide you and your students through the process of creating a successful podcast. So on the screen there, you see two mentors, Lovey and Sean, and they have some online videos uh, for, that are embedded throughout the unit. And they serve as real world mentors for learners to progress through um, the lessons. If you haven't checked out their videos before, I definitely encourage you to do so. We set what sets Discover Podcasting Lab apart from other podcasting programs is that our developers work directly with industry experts to create the program that mimics that real world podcasting in industry. And all throughout the process of designing the lessons, uh, we consulted with those subject matter experts and received feedback for how we can make it more authentic and more valuable for your learners. So just really quickly, I wanna uh, talk through a couple of different um, people who uh, helped us with that. That first uh, gentleman there you see is Mark Sanchez. He's a senior producer of award-winning podcast, Brains On. Awesome podcast for kids. Uh, it's It actually is where kids are not just their listeners. They're actually in the episodes, driving the episodes with their questions and serving as co-hosts with them. So it's a great mentor podcast for your learners. Um, he really understands what excites kids about STEM and his expertise made him a really valuable collaborator in our project. Uh, Frankie in the middle there, Frankie Barnhill. She's an award-winning journalist and a producer of a lot of different audience-powered podcasts. And as a subject matter expert, she provided a lot of real life uh, workings into the process of podcast producers and radio journalists and uh, preparing for interviews and gathering ambient sound, all those different things that make a podcast really come together. And Karen uh, uh, Patterson there on the end, she is an ELL teacher from Manhattan, New York. And she works mostly with Mandarin speaking students. And her, she and her students submitted an episode to NPR's Student Podcast Challenge in 2020. And they were actually the middle school grand prize winners, which was really exciting, I, as you can imagine. Uh, Karen has continued to lead that podcasting club and it's been highlighted by programs like CNN's United Shades of America. So it, it really uh, took off. And for me, uh, Karen's work is super inspirational. She just kind of shows us how far an educator's work can reach and how, how they can take learners so far beyond the what was traditionally just like those four walls of your, of your learning environment. Um, is, would anybody be interested in maybe hearing a little bit about Karen's students and, and seeing what exactly they did and the podcasting strategies they used? Maybe just put like a, a thumbs up in the chat or a thumbs up in your video. Or say like, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Sure. All right, awesome. So let's take a look at them then because they are the coolest. I love sharing about them. Let me grab that. Okay, these are them. They are the dragon kids. 
Um, and their winning episode uh, was called um, Masked Kids. And they interviewed 10th graders about harassment and racism that they experienced in a public school. Uh, and throughout their podcast, they were weaving in relevant Mandarin uh, sayings and, and words. Within every episode, they teach those phrases and it, it gave them a chance to share their culture with others. Um, and they used that platform to connect with different teens across the nation. Uh, and something that, you know, a lot of our students don't necessarily have the opportunity to do and podcasting provides that, which is pretty exciting. Um, they're also a great example of how to use branding and self-expression strategies. I and mean, you can see their logo there on the side. Um, you'll notice they have the dragon, that is their school mascot, and they used it to name their podcast. And because they are from New York City, right over by Chinatown, um, they can, they're can they pretty close to the Brooklyn Bridge. And so you can see they've included just like a bit about themselves. And they were able to come together and collaborate on designing that logo and really not only unified them as a team, but kind of shared with the, with the podcasting community who they are as a group, which is so important, and creating an identity for each other. So you can see there they have different episodes. And again, these are all uh, available as mentor episodes for your learners. Um, they include kids in the title so that they can connect to their audience and be like, hey, this is this is a podcast for kids. Like, make sure you're listening. Um, they're middle schoolers. I don't know if I've mentioned that before. Uh, and down there is Mass Kids. That's when they won their competition with. Um, and I love sharing their story because it really shows that learners their age can accomplish such big things, right? Collaborating, sharing ideas. They're an excellent mentor for your learners in a really explicit way, right? Getting your learners to say like, hey, I can do this. Like, this is something that I am capable of no matter my age and no matter where I'm from. Uh, I can communicate my ideas and my message with a larger audience. All right, we're gonna move back into giving a lot of tips and uh, different things that you can use with your learners uh, in your environment. So you can just type out in the chat box. You don't have to turn on your mic if you don't want to. What are some roles that you think are associated with podcasting? So jobs that are on a podcasting production team. Uh, I see a question from Grace. Uh, it says, everyone's working. is everyone working together to create one podcast? No, you'll have different teams uh, of podcasting teams within your, your lesson. So we're going to see what roles make up uh, a, a group in just a second. Say script writer, sound and mic check, interviewer, sounds person, reporter and researcher, editor. All right, so you guys have a good feel of, you've listened to podcasts, you have a good feel of what you think might be in their logo creator. You. <laughs> All right, so these are the roles that our experts say are on every production team, right? You have your lead producer, you guys said editor, sound engineer, um, the host, like the people that you're actually listening to. You guys said writers. And uh, the one that kind of took me, surprised me was voice actors. I thought that sounded super interesting uh, when I first learned about it. And that's somebody who really like, does character voices. So we mentioned earlier that storytelling piece for people who are doing uh, groups that are doing a more uh, fiction podcast. Some, a lot of times they have uh, someone who is acting out a character, or even in nonfiction, right? Maybe they're pretending to be someone in one of those mystery dramas that that we were we were uh, talking about earlier. I did want to highlight um, two that I think are are pretty unique. Uh, the sound engineer always struck me as something really interesting because they use uh, music to set the mood. Um, they use music to transition between segments and uh, highlight what they want audiences to pay attention to and, and to use humor. And to do that, they work really closely with the writers, right? Because the writers are, are thinking through what needs to be said and the sound engineer is kind of that support. Um, so I, I, I was always fascinated by uh, those two jobs in particular. Um, podcasting hits a ton of standards across grade levels. So we're going to take a look really quickly at the International Society for Technology and Education standards that podcasting STEM lessons make tangible for learners. So just kind of peruse over. I know you've probably seen these a hundred times, um, but keep them in the back of your mind because in a little while I'm going to ask you uh, if there are any of these that you currently use in your classroom and how we can how podcasting might affect them. So just take a look. For me, it was a uh, global collaborator. Uh, 
that always seemed really difficult for me. Uh, how do I get my kids to make a global impact? How do I make my kids uh, be able to connect with others uh, across the country and or nationally, globally? Um, and the Dragon Kids, once I saw them, I was like, oh, well, <laughs> that's kind of, that fear was kind of smashed, right? It's, it's much more doable than I, I originally thought. It opens, podcasting just opens so many doors to learners. And then these are just a couple of the many ELA standards uh, in grades six to 12 that podcasting addresses. And I, I look at this and I see like for writing standards, uh, writing inform informative and explanatory text, like what uh, so much, it's so much more fun to be able to write that text and know that you're delivering that message to an authentic audience rather than just that five paragraph essay that we've all had to write, right? It's something that's saying this is gonna be heard by others. It, 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 promotes engagement, it, promotes, it motivates learners. Um, so we're really hitting these different standards in a, in a more unique way, getting that buy-in from our learners. Oh, and uh, just to circle back to uh, the sound engineers and writers, um, there's that reading standards for literature, uh, craft and structure. And as soon as I saw that, I'm thinking like, wow, like you can, that's, that's that piece where they're, the sound engineers are working with the writer to convey humor and convey drama within their podcast, right? Just same way that authors would do in a story. So just taking a look at how uh, you can make such an impact in such a, a, a unique and different way when you take on a new skill like podcasting, right? So what we traditionally would have done, podcasting takes to a whole new level and still meets those standards in a way that makes sense for your learners and is engaging. All right, so let's kind of think, all right? We just saw all of those standards and I want you to think of a lesson or think of a standard that you work on with your class uh, or whomever you're in your learning environment. And I want you to kind of reimagine that standard for your grade level with podcasting, right? So we've seen all the different things that podcasting can do um, and all the, a couple of different things that it teaches into. What's a way that you can reimagine that standard uh, so that it's amplified by podcasting. So like my example would maybe be the informative and explanatory text, right? So taking that, if I old school, I would have done maybe a five paragraph essay or some kind of written essay, but instead I can use podcasting to change that up. It's a tough one, I know. <laughs> Come on, teachers, anyone? Um, so I don't know, I might, this might be like a wrong answer. Um, no wrong answer, you're good. Okay, <laughs> um, so maybe when it, cause I work with kindergarten and first grade. So I'm like, okay, I'm trying to see how this would go with them. And I'm thinking maybe just like reading to help with their reading levels. So mm -hmm. maybe instead of like reading out loud, word for word, they could read out loud, but it would be towards, you know, something that interests them to help them with their reading level at the same time as podcasting, mm -hmm. kind of like go, going hand in hand. Right, that fluency piece, right? If you're practicing fluency, just reading out loud maybe to a teacher, like you're kind of like, all right, well, I have to do this. I'm reading to my teacher. I'm working on my fluency. But if you're sharing something that's exciting to you and you know other people are going to get to listen to it and maybe they're going to be just as interested in that thing that you're listening to, you it starts to seem less like work and like you're not really working on your fluency. You're working on sharing this story. And what comes of that is the benefit of enhancing your reading fluency, right? That's exactly what we're looking at. See, no wrong answers. That was perfect. Thank you so much for sharing it. I see in the script, uh, in the uh, chat, someone said uh, making a script and brainstorming ideas. Absolutely. Podcasting helps with that. Um, working on writing, reading. Yes, taking uh, classics like that old school stuff and juxtaposing them to this current modern technology. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing, Grace. Yep. 
give a second because I don't know if anybody is furiously typing right now. So <laughs> I'll give you an, another second if, in case you are. Right, we just want to make sure that we're, I, I, what I want you to, to see from this is that podcasting really can take anything that you are teaching and you can bring it into that 21st century and, and make it tangible for your learners in a way that's super engaging, in a way that they're going to relate to and remember, um, which makes the learning process all that, that much stronger. All right, so uh, we're going to now just kind of go through uh, what that process would look like if you were starting up a podcast, what, what that journey would be uh, for your learners. In our program, we start with kind of a choose your own adventure journey uh, to decide which of those many formats that podcasts typically follow your learners are most interested in. So like we said, each group uh, is working with like six to eight or so members, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Cynthia, but a couple of different learners um, within the group. So not that full class podcast, just different groups within. Uh, and they're going to have varying interests, right? They're going to have different things that they're passionate about. So this kind of activity really hones in what do we all want to work on. Uh, and it also opens up some uh, avenues to make them feel comfortable sharing with one another. When you're brainstorming for podcasts, you want to ask questions like, do you think, do you like to make up stories? Uh, do you like to act out in different characters or use funny voices? Do you like true stories about yourself or your family or your friends? Um, are you interested in famous events? Are you interested in news stories? Uh, do you like sharing your opinions? There's a lot of people who don't enjoy sharing their opinions. So you want to get that out, that out right up front and get learners thinking about their own strengths, get them thinking about their own interests. This activity really opens them up to being a part of that pitch process that we talked about earlier and sets them up for success. So now we move into kind of the bulk of what podcasting is. And as I mentioned earlier, like this is, I'm so glad that we already brought up storytelling because like that's the big idea, right? Being able to share and tell your story. We're going to look at some examples uh, before you actually get a chance to plan your own stories in an activity that you'll be able to do with your kids right away. Um, and there, we're going to use strategies that we discovered from our subject matter experts. So they're right from the podcasting industry. Uh, even though podcasts happen behind a microphone, you've already seen how real, how truly collaborative the process is, uh, and when all the way from the point when they think about it to the point where it's actually heard by an authentic audience. Um, so one way that uh, one strategy that you can use with your students is called story slamming. Uh, this is a kind of idea from an organization called The Moth that started in New York City, and they do story slamming in front of a live audience and have different storytelling workshops. And we use them as, as a, a mentor for our students. And the way that story slamming works is that you tell a true story about your life in front of that live audience. You can put your name in a bag. They'll choose your name. If you're chosen, you get five minutes to tell your story in front of the big crowd. Uh, there are no scripts. It is, a, a, like I said, a true story. Um, there are small venues, large venues. There's a podcast and radio show. Um, and uh, like I said, there's no script to read from. So uh, their stories, while they're planned, they're a lot more organic. And that's what podcasting is, right? You don't want to go and just listen to somebody read and read and read. Uh, it, it's not an audio book, right? It's more of a conversation. When you go and listen to a podcast, you feel like you're, you know, chatting with your friends or listening to uh, somebody have a discussion. So that uh, organic, authentic feel is really important. Okay, so think about the podcasts that you do listen to. What about them is compelling and makes you want to listen? How do they grab your attention? I'm going to grab a drink while you all think tone of voice and the topics. Yes, right? You don't want to be monotonous for sure. Something that's relatable, something new that you're learning, absolutely. Kind 
How about a way that they grab your attention? The way that they kind of get you to want to listen. Yes, humor, absolutely. Definitely. When I think about that, at how the audience gets their attention, that's when I start to think of kind of the writing strategies I used to use with my students of like, when they're starting their story, how do we get them to get students, uh, their readers interested in what they have to say? And that's the same thing with podcasting, right? Pulling that ELA standard and saying, how do I get my listener instead of my reader, my listener interested in what I have to say? Because it's still using that strategy just in a more, in, uh, a, a more innovative way. Yes, the fact that they sound confident and excited, absolutely. All right, so let's take a look. Um, hooking the audience, uh, again, that's that ELA piece. Um, being able to, at the very start of their work, at the very start of their podcast, being able to hook their audience and say, this is why you should listen. This is why my story is compelling and why you should listen to my story slam. You can have them maybe start with a mystery, paint a picture, ask a question, use a surprising fact. All these different ways that we've used in our classroom before in, that, in our writing, in our students' writing, and now it's coming into podcasting. The Moth uses a kind of graphic organizer story map to guide through how to create your podcast and how to create your, your story. Um, and we're going to refer to this today as we look through an example from a, uh, a, a student, a high school student who's about to give a, a story slam. Um, and he starts his story in something called the world as it was, right? So what was the world like at the very beginning of your story, at the very beginning of that true event that you're about to share? His uh, slam is called The Prom, and kids love hearing his story because it's super relatable and it's a great resource uh, for your students as a mentor. To, uh, I always want to say mentor text, but now we're in podcasting, right? So we're in the 21st century. It's not mentor text anymore. I got to... <laughs> I'm moving past the mentor podcast. Um, and we're going to analyze together how uh, they, Dante, the presenter, uses the, story, the moth story map to make his readers, uh, his listeners, uh, care about what he has to say. And that first piece is hooking in his audience. So as you listen to this beginning part of, this, of his video, I want you to think which of the hooks did he use most effectively? I mean, give me a thumbs up if you can hear the video when it starts, okay? Can we hear the audio? No, it doesn't sound uh, very clear. It's choppy. Mm. All right, hold on one second, everyone. Maybe we start it? Sure. Is there sound right now? Yes, it's like a music. Do you not hear it? Oh, no. Uh-uh. Oh, no. All right. <laughs> Hold on. One moment. My idea for a podcast episode would be the struggles of using Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> and it's interesting because everyone has them. Uh, let's see. What if you play and then, like, expand the, the video? Mm -hmm. Like, expand the window, maybe? Maybe that'll work. Anything? You no. have to share audio. Yeah, you said to share audio. Yep, yep, yep. Let's see, how do we do that? It'll be um when you click on the share screen button, there will be a checkbox at the bottom that says share audio. We were having the same issue in the last workshop and it was hit or miss if it worked or not. Ah, all right, well then, let's see, hold on. 
Yeah, click on advanced sharing options and maybe right there. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't have anything about audio on my side. You don't have your audio going to earpiece or anything like that, do you? No, I do not. Okay, okay, just making sure. No, I lost that little thing. Hold on. I apologize, everyone. <laughs> Ah, he has such a great story. I want you all to hear it. One moment. So it wouldn't be new share. I don't know. Any ideas, anyone? If you stop sharing and uh, click the share screen button again, the little box should be at the bottom that says share audio. Okay. Give that a try. Oh, I think we got it. Let's see. That was it. All right. Thank you so much. Good job. Whew. Okay. Back in middle school, I wasn't really the type of kid to let myself have any fun. I was, I was afraid that if I let myself have fun, I'd end up being judged. Eighth grade comes around, prom is coming up, everybody's talking about it. Hey, you going to prom? I'm going to prom. You know what you're wearing? You know who you're going with? Oh, I know what I'm going with. <laughs> but me, I, I wasn't planning on it. I didn't really want to go. I thought I'd just skip it. I thought I'd just end up being a kid in the corner, chicken in hand. Can't hear you, Jessica. <laughs> Got it. Sorry about that. Um, what about what hook did Dante use to kind of pull us into his story? Did he create a mystery, paint a picture, ask a question, or use a surprising fact? You can just throw it in the chat box. Oh, okay. So you're you're um, so you're saying like the video itself. Yes, I mean uh, for they, they used music and artwork within the video, but think of it more as like we're we're watching it. Uh, just the the moth made it a little bit more exciting. But remember that in slamming, it's just in front of an audience. They're just watching him speak, right? So what storytelling strategy, I should say, did he use to hook us in? Yeah, painting a picture, ask questions. Okay. Yeah, for uh, for me, I I would say he he painted a picture, right? He kind of set the scene for us. This is what's going on in my life. This is what's happening in the world as it was. I wasn't sure if I was going to go to prom. I really wanted to. I, I didn't really want to. Um, and kind of getting our our his listeners in on like, here's why you should care, right? It's a relatable story. Painting a picture, yeah. All right, so then we move into the second part of our story map and then one day, right? So this is the world as it was, and then something changed, something messes with the status quo that makes listeners want to listen. So gonna, as we go through the second part of Dante's story, uh, think about what sets the story in motion and what changes for him and what do you think is gonna happen next? Oops. After being constantly bugged by friends and family, I decided, you know what, what the heck, might as well go. Let's just hear what it's going to be about. So, um, 
graduation and prom was on the same day. Graduation was early on in the day. We sang Celine Dion. I hated it. <laughs> so um, I go home. I get dressed. I throw on my suit. Have my little fedora on, you know, <laughs> stunting. And um, I should mention that at first we had no idea how it was going to get there. I, we knew no buses that ran by. So we figured we were going to take a cab, but my friend Shannon comes. She says, hey, my mom got a truck. You can swing by. My mom will drop you off. I'm like, oh, cool. So my mom was okay with it. They knew each other. They decided. We decided to go along with the plan. So I'm going to my friend Shannon's house. It's a block away from my house. We're all outside, chilling. My mom's taking a bajillion pictures. You know how to get around this kind of time. <laughs> Shannon comes outside, and... Typically, she's a tomboy. She's usually just seeing shirt, jeans, sneakers. That's it. But she comes out, she got her hair down. She got her little right dress on. She got the real huge hoop earrings, you know. <laughs> so now I'm standing here. I'm like, huh. <laughs> well, now. <laughs> so, we... <laughs> We get in the truck, it's about a 15, 20 minute drive, it's not very long. So I go inside, the space is a little bit smaller than I thought it would be, granted it's not a lot of us, but it was pretty fancy looking, and I thought it was a good place to be. Music starts playing, everybody's on the dance floor. I'm in the corner, standing there, chicken in hand. Okay. So what is that interruption to the status quo? What sets his story in motion? And again, this is an activity that you would do with your students. Yes, he's definitely uses humor all throughout. Yeah, the cute girl is kind of like that, that, uh, hey, maybe, maybe I might as well give this a shot, right? So being really intentional with how he progresses through that story, and you're thinking like, all right, where is this going to go? Uh, any predictions about what, what might happen next? Going to the dance. <laughs> Your boy got a date, going to ask her to dance. All right, let's see. And again, these are some questions that you can use with your learners as you're kind of getting them familiar with how to tell that story slim, right? So we're just modeling what you can be doing with your learners. All right, the moth story map again, um, we're gonna see raising the stakes and the moment of change in there as well. But really it all just comes down to that final piece of at the world as it is now. So as you've taken us through this journey of your true story, Oh, how, what is the resolution and, and how, does the, how does it all end up for your character? We're gonna see Dante do that now. Um, so we wanna think about what is different about him after the dance and how do you think he's going to face future situations that make him uncomfortable, right? Because in the beginning, we know he didn't really feel that comfortable. I'm kind of giving him a little bit away, but maybe he's gonna feel comfortable now. How is he gonna face those situations when they come up again? I, I had a few people come up to me and try me pull me on the dance floor, but I wasn't moving. I was not moving. I wasn't moving for anything but chicken. So the DJ decides to put on this song, and now he's saying, you know, everybody that's not dancing, you got to grab them, grab them, pull them on that dance floor. Anybody, you see anybody standing on the wall, you got to grab them, bring them on the floor. So I try not to make myself look suspicious, so I start doing a little... <laughs> I start doing a little two-step. This, this is where it was at. So... <laughs> gradually, over time, I start getting more into it.
The little two step turns into a little turns a little to a shuffle. <laughs> no. That shuffle turns into a crisscross. And that crisscross turns into a God knows what. I don't even know what I was. I don't even know what I was doing anymore. I just know that I'm I'm on fire. <laughs> And it turns out that was one of the best nights of my life. And it's like my life up until that point, I was locked in a dark room, but then I decided to unlock the door and I took a step out. And I learned how to dance. I enjoy that every time I watch it. Um, so what is different about Dante after the dance? Confident, yep, courage, definitely. So now that he has that newfound confidence, that newfound courage, how do you think he would face situations differently in the future? What really, how did this one isolated story really change him as a person? are open to new things, realize his own abilities so he can use them more fully in the future and trust himself more. Yep. Extroverted and open. Very willing to try new things. Definitely. All right. So I definitely encourage you to explore Dante's videos and uh, the story map um, and as a tool for your learners to kind of get them into that storytelling mode and being able to authentically share their story in a way that sounds more like a conversation and less like script reading. So now you guys are going to get a chance to do this yourselves. Um, our Discover Podcasting lessons always start with objectives and we've pulled out two here. I can outline and practice storytelling like a story slammer and I can create a hook in my story to get the audience's attention. Uh, if you look in the chat, uh, we just added a PDF for reference on the activity we're about to do. So if you wanna download that, uh, now would be a great time to do so. And as you do, uh, I'm gonna talk about a strategy that podcasters use to help them plan for their stories. Um, one way that you can help them meet the objectives is by using sticky notes. Uh, I am a huge fan of sticky notes. I use them all the time in my learning environment. Um, they're, in my opinion, one of the best no tech tools. Uh, and a sticky note storyboarding strategy is what the pros use. You can see kind of that picture where the wall is just kind of covered in different color post-its. Um, like we said, hosts are not typically reading from a script. They're using their notes to make that organic conversation and sticky notes allow you to do that. So this is uh, actually what the dragon kids use. And you're gonna notice that their notes, they have very few words on there. Um, it's mostly sketches, right? It's mostly sketches to get them to think about, all right, this was that part of the story and kind of just trigger uh, the storytelling piece that they wanna say without actually having to write it out. Um, their teacher, Karen Patterson said, this was especially helpful for her ELL learners. Makes the process really visual, visual and really easy uh, to make revisions throughout the process. All right, so here's that activity. And again, this is uh, based on, actually it is, the uh, free downloadable activity that we have available for you called uh, Geek Out with STEM Podcasting. It's no prep. You can use it with your learners right away. Um, we're gonna practice that story slamming piece together. And it's all about sharing a passion that you have. So tell a story about how you first discovered your passion. Did someone introduce it to you? Did you learn about it all on your own? Why is it important to you? Uh, if it's an education thing, like awesome. Like for me, it might be um, that I always said I was not a science person until somebody, uh, one of my colleagues kind of made me go to a science PLC. And then kind of from there, like it sparked my like, wow, everybody can kind of do science. And I became a K-5 
instructional coach. So it could be education uh, or it could just be something personal. Like I have a, a big interest in uh, bullet journaling. It's like scrapbooking. And so it could be a passion of uh, something that you just are comfortable sharing with others. So really kind of think about what is uh, important to you. Quick guidelines. Your story shouldn't be more than two to three minutes. Uh, you want to use a hook like we discussed to uh, sh to engage your learners right away and, and your listeners right away and get them interested in what you have to say. And uh, if you have our, if you were somehow knew that we were going to do this and you have the PDF printed out, you can use the the one that is in our Geek Out with STEM po podcasting that Cynthia just attached. Um, or you uh, can just use, if you have sticky notes around you, great. If not, just grab a piece of paper and uh, draw out your sketches really quickly. Uh, there's no need to write a script we, uh, at all. Make sure your last sentence like Dante's is really clear that you're finished uh, so that people aren't waiting for your story to end, right? Like they know definitively that it's over. Uh, the moth gives us some tips on, on ways to make your story uh, compelling. Really state your fears and desires, make us invested in your outcome. Uh, I like the one that says, impress us with observations that are uniquely yours, right? It's your story. It's a true story. So what did you see? What did you hear? Uh, really pull us in. Um, and uh, think about the end, right? Just like Dante, how did you change by the end of it? Um, what's different for you? And uh, this is just an example of the um, what you can use to plan your story. So you notice that the notes section is relatively small because we just want you to have a couple of notes rather than writing out your story, really utilize drawings. Um, and then I'm going to leave this screen up as you're working so that you can kind of see some prompts to get you thinking. So for the world as it was, setting the scene and hooking your audience, making your, your listeners care, uh, what were you doing before it all began, uh, and then moving through that process. So we're going to give you a, a couple of minutes to do your sketches, and uh, plan out what is your passion, something that uh, changed you over time. Um, and we'll share that out as a group as kind of like a practice story slam. Um, whether you're comfortable sharing your story or not, we really love to see your sketches of kind of like how you plan that out. So if you're able to maybe snap a photo and add it to the chat, or even when we come back together, we can hold it up to the camera. And even if you're not, you're not comfortable sharing your story in a story slam format, even just kind of like talk us through, um, that would be awesome. So just to kind of give you a prepare, uh, to prepare you for what's coming. Does anyone have any questions for me on, on how this activity is gonna go? So everybody will, come up with their own story, create a hook, then they will use sketches to tell their story, and then they'll have an opportunity to share the story with everybody. Yes? That's it. Yep. Yeah. Um, you can do just the three sketches like we have up here in our, our graphic organizer, or if like the Dragon Kids, you want a couple more, uh, that's really up to you. Whatever kind of helps you think through your story and kind of cue you in to what you would want to say. All right, we're going to give you a couple of minutes to do that. I feel like I need like think music. Uh, and then uh, if you do finish, uh, just give us kind of maybe a thumbs up in the chat or something so that we know kind of where you are in your planning process. And then we will share our stories. I can't wait to hear some.
How are we doing, everyone? Are we sketching? Do you need a couple more minutes? All right, we'll give you a couple more minutes. We have a very quiet group. <laughs> it's podcasting. I know. Because we're busy sketching away. Yeah, Okay. Can we get kind of like a, a vibe check on, on where everybody is in their process? Is anybody ready to share either their slam or their sketches or both? Um, or if you need a couple more minutes, Grace is giving a thumbs up. Karen's turning off his mic. I feel a story coming. <laughs> yeah, I can go if you want. All right. Awesome. For sure. Uh, we, are you gonna do your your slam, or, or are you just sharing your images? I could do my slam. My images aren't the best. All right, uh, I love that. That's and plus, fine. I think with my blur background and all that. So, gotcha. Uh, I guess I can start my slam off. Um, so, at uh, this point in my life, I just got married, and we were flying into our honeymoon in Jamaica, sandals, and we're eating a great, you know, like a luau feast. And we can hear uh, Michael Jackson in the background. And, uh, you know, my wife's like, well, let's go figure out what that is. And so we all go and this group is already completely um, picked and ready to go for this dance competition. And she's like, just join. And I'm like, well, they're already picked. I can't. She pushes me in. Um, even the host says, where did you come from? Um, and then lo and behold, I end up going to like a three rounds competition with everyone and win the whole competition. And so for the rest of the, uh, you know, whole sandals experience, of the two weeks uh, honeymoon, they're like, oh, big boy can dance, you know, and they started calling me MJ, because uh, I'm like six, four, you know, 330 pounds. So uh, that's how I, I already knew I did, you know, a passion for dancing. But um, anytime there's competition at dancing or something like that, I, you know, I can't help myself. And so that's my uh, slam, I guess. Nice. Awesome. Thank you so much. I, I love that you started with your, like that mystery hook, right? You're pulling yeah. this in. Oh, what's that sound? I don't know. That What's that music coming from? Um, and uh, it was also relatable, right? Because a lot of people have been on our honeymoon. We all know Michael Jackson's music. So uh, you did a great job with all of those different strategies. You don't have to show us your drawings because you're saying you're not a confident drawer. Um, but no, what... I'm actually a good drawer, but it, I use more words. I felt like. Oh, okay. I gotcha. I gotcha. Were yeah. they kind of like short flips? Yeah. Like I just, I don't know if you can even see it. Oh, yeah. Cause it's <laughs> my pad. So that's okay. It. That's right. That's awesome. So again, just that idea that like, you don't have to write out that script and your, com your, your slam was conversational conversation driven. And plus I'm in sales. <laughs> so this is, I mean, I tell stories every time I interact and right. I, I just I'm constantly have to listen and tell people your stories and you go back and forth and that's how you create those deeper relationships. So. Right. So it's a, a skill that no matter what, whether obviously if they don't go into podcasting, it's clearly 
something that we want to work on with our students because it's a skill that is going to serve them well for many, many years to come. Yeah, a lot of people will always say to like, you could have, you know, the best degree, but if you can't hold a conversation, you can't talk to anyone, it's really hard to, you know, get a, get to the next level, because I'm opposite, right? I'm really good talker and can talk to anyone. And don't, I feel very comfortable in a room full of 100 people, but academically, you know, well, slower learner, audible guy. So, so I definitely can relate to all the kids that go through that. That's why I love, you know, giving back and helping at the community level. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Is there anybody else who would like to present? I can go. I just want to apologize for my voice. I'm getting over a cold, so I might sound kind of funny. <laughs> sound um, wonderful. <laughs> um, so my story starts um, watching a fried cricket spitting contest <laughs> at my <laughs> local, at my, uh, <laughs> at the gym of uh, a junior high school. Um, after school and I was running after school programs there through Young Life and basically doing things like blind volleyball, frozen turkey, bowling, um, all sorts of just crazy out there fun stuff, um, just getting kids out of their comfort zone and and having a safe place to hang out. Um, but while I was there, I had been meeting with uh, the school officials as well because we were on the campus and found out about just the great educational need of most of the students that were in our program, um, particularly uh, just the lack of reading uh, ability. And I heard from sixth graders that, you know, they didn't feel like school mattered. It just wasn't for them. Um, they just weren't smart enough, like from the mouths of sixth grade girls. And that shocked me <laughs> so much that I wanted to, um, help with this problem of literacy. And the more I looked into it, uh, the more I saw that it's an increasing problem. It's really not getting better in our country. And um, so I entered a, a master's of education program um, to, to come to schools in an after school capacity with an academic mindset instead of um, what I had been doing before. So now I am an enrichment coordinator um, and hoping to start programs that really help to tackle this problem. <laughs> awesome. Uh, I, I have to point out your amazing hook in the beginning. You had me for, <laughs> for a second. <laughs> very, very, very cool. Uh, great use of that technique. Um, yeah. And, and uh, that's awesome what you're doing uh, for your learners. So thank you so yeah. much for sharing that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give maybe time for one more and then we're gonna move into our, our question and answer session. Anyone else? Okay. Um, if you're willing, able, uh, uh, excited to feel free to snap a picture of your plan and put it in the chat if you'd like. Uh, we'd certainly love to see it um, just to kind of look through that process and how, and how you were thinking through it. Okay. Um, Move past that. We already did. Uh, so let's just share one more last thing uh, before our Q and A session. Um, how can you use either the sticky board strategy, the sticky note, stick, the sticky note storyboard strategy in your room, uh, or story slamming? Any of the strategies that we've worked on today? How do you see them working uh, in your lear particular learning environment? Or even like a thumbs up of like, I can use this, or it's not for me. <laughs> I was just thinking it might be helpful too, and um, just helping students work through past experiences and mm -hmm. kind of build their own story or how to give voice to their own personal stories, even if I can't get a podcast group started right away, just the idea of helping students be able to tell a story or or something that impacts them would be very beneficial. Absolutely. All right, we're going to open it up then to um, some questions if you have any. Oops, too far back. Oh, I'm missing. Oh, 
there it is. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> I apologize. Um, some questions either about podcasting in general, about our Discover Pad podcasting program. Uh, this is your chance to kind of ask us uh, whatever you have on your mind. Do you have suggestions for the tech they would need to start a student podcast? Yes, we do. <laughs> Cindy, I'm going to let you take that one if that's okay. Yes. Um, so we have a partnership with Soundtrap, who offers the top of the line uh, podcasting technology. And we are going to share a link so that you guys can get a free 90 day trial so that you and your learners can use all of the features and, you know, try a hand at podcasting. Yeah, and in terms of the devices you can use, this is Ryan from PCS, by the way. Uh, it is Chromebook compatible. So if you guys have a bunch of Chromebooks sitting around, you can certainly use Soundtrap on that. But basically any web-enabled device is uh, uh, good for it because it is a, uh, a web-based platform. Thanks for your question, Grace. Any other questions? How would you go about getting school approval for something like this? Like if 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 it's being put out, right, as a podcast, um, does it have to be run through the the, the school first or, or how does that work? Do you want to answer that, Ryan? Yeah, sure. So I'd say it depends on the site. I don't know if you mean in terms of the technical ability to you know, use things like Soundtrap. Um, how we do it is a cluster of materials that you get. So you get all your sound recording stations that we had, had a picture of earlier, and then uh, access to Soundtrap. And once you're in Soundtrap, you actually have kind of a closed off ecosystem of sorts where you can control the content that the students can or cannot see. So if there were any concerns on the part of your administrators or whomever, um, you can show them, you know, we have this, you know, closed environment where the students can create and bounce ideas off each other. And it's not the case that it's like, you know, open to everyone. So anything that, you know, potentially has profanity, because I'm sure there's plenty of podcasts out there that do, I've heard them, um, you can shut all that off, you know, and just keep to where it's your students working in there and creating their own content. Um, does that address your question or was it more of something else? No, no, that's it. Um, and then when they publish a podcast, so like the group that won an award and was highlighted um, here by you guys, can you go and listen to that podcast? Is it um, like live or is that, is there a special, um, I don't know, for, for kids who are underage that want to do it? I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So Soundtrap is owned by Spotify. And so they obviously have pretty substantial reach. And so once you do all your editing and what have you within Soundtrap, you can publish it there too. Um, and so you can provide that link to whoever wants to listen to the podcast or if you want to show it to other instructors or if you want to show it to your administrators, whoever it may be. Uh, you can definitely share all that content. Okay, thank you. And I did leave a comment uh, in the questions that said this, but we also will be at CAN in Long Beach. So whoever's able to make it in person, uh, we'll have three people there. We'll be uh, Susie, Amy, and Jan. We'll be there ready to address your questions. We'll have a little display set up that has the sound shield and the microphone and the filter and all that. And we'll have the full length curriculum out there too. So you can thumb through the curriculum in person. We'll have a copy of the educator guide, which is for the instructor of the course. And then we have the little podcaster pads, which are kind of like the student workbooks that they work through. So all that'll be there and you could see it, you know, in the flesh as, uh, as you would get it if you used it in your program. Yeah, one more thing I'd like to point out is that I, I know a lot of um, schools in, in California right now are utilizing their ELO funds um, to acquire programs like this to bring them into their learning environments because it hits a lot of the uh, standard requirements. 
So. All right. Um, do you want to go on to the next slide? Um, we are going to share the presentation with um, with everybody who attended. And in that last slide, you will see um, a link to go get your um, Soundtrap free 90 day trial. So, you know, we invite everybody to, you know, go set up an account, just poke around. You don't necessarily have to use it if, if you know, you're not ready to do that. But at least I'll give you an opportunity to look at the environment, how it's created, how, you know, safe it is for, for you and your learners. And, um, you know, just poke around. If you have any questions at any time, feel free to reach out to us at PCS Adventures, um, sales at adventures.com or call us at our 800 number. Or go to our website, adventures.com, to learn more about us and the different um, enrichment programs that, that we have. Um, you know, as Jessica mentioned earlier, we've been around for a very long time. We have so many fun themes and, and topics and, and awesome curriculum out there that you might be interested in. Um, I also shared earlier a link to the free STEM activity that Jessica mentioned, Geek Out with STEAM podcasting. Um, so a link will be in that um, PDF slide as well so that you can directly go to uh, the page and download the activity that you can do with your students in your classroom. Does anybody have any other questions? All right. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, I hope that you're able to use podcasting in your learning environments. Uh, as soon as possible. It's a really great tool. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Thanks, everybody. And we are Thanks, Jessica. Time.